What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for Sports. So Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen will forever be linked due to their partnership with the Chicago Bulls, which led to six NBA championships during the 1990s. And um, some people consider them the greatest duo in basketball history. Some even will say perhaps in sports history. But unfortunately, the relationship between the two have become strained, and some people think uh, permanently damaged because of recent events. Now, of course, uh, it was back in the spring of 2020 when ESPN aired The Last Dance, which is now on Netflix, of course, and Scottie Pippen did not like the way that he was portrayed in that documentary. He thought that it glorified Michael Jordan while minimizing the roles of everyone else. And of course, since then, he's come out with the book Unguarded, which came out in November, which was a response to The Last Dance. And, um, you know, Dennis Rodman said some real shit recently, man. And I agree with Dennis Rodman because I think that this is the core of what Scotty is mad about. So Dennis Rodman said in a recent interview, quote, I just think Scotty is so hurt because he wants to get that recognition with Michael, because he grew up with Michael, that whole 11 years, they played together, and uh, he's mad the fact that Mike got $10 million for that documentary, and he got nothing, and I think that's at the core of it as well, because Scottie Pippen mentions the fact that Michael got $10 million and everybody else got nothing, and when you look at, you know, past um, history between the two, money has always been a sore point. Money has always been a sore point in their relationship. Now, this is the thing, though. Before 1996, or 95, 96, well, no, before 1996, I, I should say, Michael wasn't making that much money when it came to his NBA salary. He was only making, I think, between 2 to $4 million a year. The difference between Pippen and Jordan is that Jordan was a cash hound uh, and a money maker when it came to endorsements. So that's how he was comp over. Actually, he was well overcompensating when it came to endorsements. Scotty didn't have that type of pull. He didn't have that type of personality. And I think the money aspect of it made him jealous. But like I always say before, man, a lot of that was his fault. A lot of that was his fault because he signed against the advice of even the general manager and the owner he signed that contract back in 1991 which aged badly because at that time nba revenues were soaring so when he signed the dotted line in 1991 it wasn't a bad contract but by two three years later it was a bad contract you know what i'm saying um, and so by 1997, he was the 122nd highest paid player in the league. He was making literally role player money. But that was Scottie Pippen's fault. He wasn't making that much money. Meanwhile, Michael Jordan had a great agent in David Falk, and he had that type of pull where he forced the Bulls to pay him $30, $30 million, $33 million. A year, which in today's market is him getting paid $55 million a year. You know, and I think money is at the core of that because when you look at it, Jordan was getting those $30, $33 million a one year contract. Scotty basically protested his contract in 97, 98. That's, you know, he, he wanted more money. So when you think about it, yeah, money is at the at the root of it. You know, he always thought that he was just as good or if not better than Michael Jordan. Now, I don't agree with that, but he's always been in this competition with Jordan. He's always been in this, you know, competition with Mike to prove that he could do this, he can do that. Um, there was, in my opinion, a spell I would say between 91 to 95, 96, 
where Scottie Pippen was one of the best players in the NBA. He was a top, uh, I would say, top five to to eight player in the league during that time period. You know, some people think that, that he wasn't all that great. I mean, that's their opinion. I do believe that at one point in time he was a really, really great player. And that, I think, came from playing with a guy like Mike with his work ethic um, and his drive, and it rubbed off on Scottie Pippen. And Scottie Pippen maximized, uh, you know, his talents. But there were some limitations to Scottie, you know. Um, there were some there were some definite limitations to Scotty, and um, you know I think in the back of the head of his mind he knows that, but he won't ever admit it. And um, when it came to being a leader of a team, Scotty has failed consistently with that. The thing that really says cement people's uh, mind in that is when he failed as a leader with Portland. With Portland in 2000, Scotty was not quite the same player that he had been a couple years earlier. But Scotty was there because of the fact that he won six championships, because of the of the pretense that he is a guy that could guide a group of young players. He is that gaudy veteran that could um, calm down a unit and lead them to victory when uh, things aren't going so well, when things are getting chaotic out there. And Scottie Pippen failed to do that with Portland in Game 7 of that, of that Western Conference Finals. And to me, I think that hurt Scottie Pippen's legacy. You know? But um, other than that, man, I, I agree with Dennis Robin on this one, man. I do believe that money has a lot to do with that, you know? Not saying that Scotty's hurting for money per se, but when you look at, you know, a lot of the great players of that era, and you look at uh, the fact that a lot of people just don't give Scotty that that due. They, you know, he he became synonymous with role player. His name, oh, he's a Scotty Pippen. That had to burn him. That has to burn him. That he's his name is synonymous with. A Robin with, uh, you know, almost synonymous with a beta, you know, not to mention the off the court stuff that's going on with him and his ex-wife and all of that. But anyway, that's pretty much all I got to say about this one. Tell me what you guys think, man.